Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I recently received several messages from viewers asking me if I could take apart several vacuum cleaner motors um, just to show them how to do it, which I'm happy to do. As you can see, I have a nice collection here. They come in different sizes, some smaller ones here, and some of them can be stubborn. I did also mention in a previous video that a lot of times on garbage day, you will come across vacuum cleaners. People will come along and just cut the cord. They will leave the rest of the vacuum cleaner. And I've also had some people comment that now they no longer touch the motors because they believe that they have been replaced with aluminum windings instead of copper. And that is true on some of them. But in my opinion, all the motors are still a great find. I will pick up the rest of the vacuum cleaner even if the power cord is gone. And that's because usually the hose, you can throw that into your tin shred. And as I said as well, the focus of this video, the motors. These motors, even if there is aluminum windings inside of them, these are still very heavy. They come in different sizes. Sometimes you will see little windings like that. But all of these motors will have aluminum inside of them. They will have brass as well and tin uh, that you could also throw in. So these are 100% scrappable as well. And in my opinion, given the frequency of vacuum cleaners you find, they will definitely add up. I have 11 motors here. I still have five or six vacuum cleaners to go through. Sometimes on uh, the annual spring cleanup uh, that I go around on garbage day for, I could find four or five vacuum cleaners in one day. So in my opinion, as I said, they definitely add up. And you cannot tell just from the vacuum cleaner if it is copper or aluminum windings anyway. Obviously, the older it is, the more likely. But I have found a lot of modern vacuum cleaners that still use copper windings as well. And with the price of copper right now, it's definitely worth taking that risk and factoring in the rest of the scrappable material I can get from this. So it's definitely better than nothing and great for the environment so it doesn't just go right to the landfill. So here we go. Gonna start, uh, just have some random ones. Um, and again, for the sake of this video, I will start with two of them right here. These have not been touched, but just from the outside you can see there is some nice yellow brass on both ends. There are some screws. The rest of this, if I put a magnet to it, you could see that the magnet sticks and that's because the shell is gonna be tin. Uh, and tin right now is going for about 10 to 12 cents a pound Canadian. Uh, and what I'm gonna do for the sake of this video, I will pretend that one of these is difficult to open. Uh, I did have someone say that they've been struggling with theirs. So just gonna hopefully show you that method. So I'm gonna start with this one. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this outer core off. And just before I start, here is a scale. I'm just gonna weigh this for you very quickly to see. I could actually throw this in as is uh, into my copper motor pile and I'm getting about 10 to 15 cents a pound. This right here weighs three pounds, seven ounces as is. The smaller one here, this came out of just a smaller vacuum cleaner. This one still weighs 15.6 ounces, so almost a pound right there. And this copper, if this does turn out to be copper, this will be number two copper, which is currently going right now for $4.03 a pound in London, Ontario. It actually just went down a little bit, but still $4 for some copper is definitely great. As well, these inner cores, I call them cores, do have copper in them. And I am gonna have a separate video showing you down the road how to take out that copper from these. So I'm gonna do that. But again, I'm gonna start with this three pound one. The first thing I'm gonna do actually is just hit the outer shell off, just using a hammer. Put it on my vise here. Sometimes it needs a couple cracks, sometimes it's sealed nicely, but inside of it you can see here is some aluminum. Put a magnet to this, it does not stick, and 
There are two ways to do this. What I'm gonna first start with is I'm just gonna peel this outer shell off just using a flathead screwdriver that I have down here. And I always use my vise as well, just to start it. Okay, put in that vise. I like to wear safety glasses as well, but I'm just gonna put it underneath, pop it up, go around it. And that's because I want to expose this screw or nut that I'm gonna show you in a second. Okay, this does not weigh a lot, but you do wanna be careful because this aluminum can be sharp. Just gonna pull this off here, roll it. Okay, so here is some nice aluminum. And I do also make sure that I pull these fins. I do get these out as well. They are aluminum, but just to make it easier and I don't potentially cut myself, I just pop them out. Okay, and I will put them into my aluminum pile as well. But what I want to do is expose this nut. And that's because underneath this plate, there is going to be a couple screws that I have to get out. So I'm gonna start with this nut here. Just gonna grab a pair of uh, vice grips. Put this into my vise. Okay, and again, if I grab it, again, I'm gonna do two. This one's gonna be easy. I'm just gonna hold this aluminum. And I'm just going to go, obviously, Clockwise, pull this off. Here is my nut. This is another panel of aluminum. So I've got a nice piece of aluminum there. This is going to be metallic, so this is gonna go into my tin pile. So right there are two nice face plates of clean aluminum. And clean aluminum right now is actually going for 55 to 60 cents a pound in Canada. Uh, London, Ontario, which is great. So if you looked at all of these motors, even if the inner cores of these motors are going to be um, aluminum winding, you still do have some 50 to 60 cent uh, a pound aluminum. And I'm probably going to have probably about nine to 10 ounces of aluminum here. Okay, so now that I've exposed that, there are a couple things. Here are my two screws that I want to play with open up. I am also going to take out the screws from here. My screws, I will just actually, I always keep a magnet on my bench. I will throw my screws into my uh, tin. I always have, like I said, I bring them in in a bucket just to make sure that they don't fall out in the truck, uh, potentially pop a tire. But nuts and bolts and screws that come out of scrapping you are going to find a whole bunch of them. They definitely add up. I actually just filled another container with screws that I scrapped. Um, so again, that's about 10 pounds. And I always just put them into my tin. I did have a comment from someone, a great question. They asked me, uh, sometimes I refer to it as my tin pile, sometimes screws I put into my steel. And it all depends on the thickness of the screw. In order to, for something in London, Ontario to be classified as uh, steel instead of tin shred, it has to be thicker than a quarter inch. So some of my screws and bolts are definitely thicker than, than quarter inch, but just for the sake of it and uh, organization, I throw them all into one pile. So I just throw them all in with tin, especially because tin, you are gonna have more likely uh, a pile of tin than steel. Steel is more things like your structural beams and I-beams, stuff like this. This would be classified, this is not thicker than a quarter inch, this would still be tin. Uh, microwave outing cases, washer, dryers, those ovens, those outer shells are also tin. Um, so that was a great question I had. So as I proceed here, now I've got this plastic off. This is gonna fall off in a second, um, but just gonna hit the back now, there are no more screws in there. I'm gonna hit that out. Okay, so now I've revealed, here is another plate. 
This, unfortunately, is plastic. There is no scrap value of this, but because of the thickness, I can actually throw this into my blue box and I will get tin shred price. Uh, and for some of these, what I would do is go ahead before I proceed with anything else, I do wanna check the windings here. I'm gonna scratch those to see if they are aluminum or copper. If I scratch it, as you can see, that is aluminum. It reveals a metallic look underneath. So the windings are gonna be copper. However, one thing that I do wanna stress is I will proceed with that still because the inner core, regardless of the windings from the larger thing, are gonna be copper still. So it definitely has copper in it um, as well. I definitely wanna make sure I get the brass out, um, but I am just gonna proceed with this for educational purposes. Again, to get these screws out, there's gonna be four of them here. And the aluminum windings, the reason you also wanna scratch them is because now at a scrapyard, we actually have two different categories for copper bearing motors or motors. Um, we will have now, especially because manufacturers are making them more common aluminum, we now have aluminum motors uh, as well as a copper bearing motor. So the copper bearing motors right now are going for about 10 to 15 cents a pound. The aluminum motors and as well as transformers are going for about um, six to seven cents a pound. So you definitely want to make sure you separate them. If you have them all together, you're going to get downgraded. Okay, but just to show you, I'm going to show the example. So there's the core for this. And I know there's another name for it, um, armature I think it is, but just gonna scratch this for you and show you right there. So that is copper. So you can see that even though this large winding here is aluminum, there's still copper here. And I am, as I said, gonna show you how to get that copper out in a different video. I'm just gonna have them separate on these armatures. But again, that is not going to um, be copper here. I will leave this in here actually and give myself the tin weight price um, because this yoke, if I pulled it out, which it's gonna look like this, this is still gonna be tin shred. And if I was to take this out, I'm gonna get seven cents. But if I leave it in, I'm gonna get the 10 to 13 cents a pound from the tin price. Okay, but again, I am gonna go ahead and take out this brass connector here, and I just hit it with a hammer. Cut the winding. Okay, there's one. There's two. Okay, so again, some tin shred. Just gonna show you, uh, just for educational, to get this part out, I would just actually stick it back into my vise. I'm going to take a, I have a, just a pry bar. This is a great tool. I often use this. I'm just going to pull this up. Okay, just feed it out. Work on both ends, but use leverage from my bench. Now this bench is rocking and it's, the bench, it's not the vice, okay, it's a, not a very heavy bench, but uh, maybe it's just, I'm too strong, but just gonna rock it out, you can see, it does come out, does break off, little parts of it, get underneath it, there we go. So, again, if this was copper, definitely some great copper from that, but I'm just gonna shove it back in here, okay, and get my tin price for this. So, that is one way. Okay, and this brass that does have, this is gonna be your yellow brass, and currently this yellow brass right here is going for $3.30 a pound, so definitely worth the wire as well. The wire here is going to give me, this would be your 60% appliance wire, which gives me right now $2.67 a pound because this is one strand of one coated wire. Um, this appliance wire that people take, this would be classified as your 40% appliance wire. It's going for about $1.67 a pound. 
This is about $1.67 a pound in London, Ontario. This is about a pound and a bit, which is great. But the reason it's called 40% is because you can see inside it has two strands of coated wire as well as an additional coating. There's more uh, plastic on this, less copper recovery. So this is lesser value than this, uh, but definitely both great scrappable material. Okay, what I'm gonna do for this one now is I'm gonna pretend that I can't get this one out. So some of them, and I actually just worked on this larger one here. Actually, I'll do this one right now. So same method here. I would start with just knocking this cap off and I'm gonna use this one. Uh, same thing, it's the same idea, but this bolt is stubborn. So this is for my other viewer that has been saying that they've been struggling with it. Very easy to do. Um, great thing is I don't have to really save any material. I can pack this up as best I want or as whatever I want because scrapyards are not gonna look at and downgrade it because of the appearance. But first thing I'm gonna do is just first take off this outer plate. Here again is some more beautiful uh, aluminum, okay? So some nice aluminum. And again, this bolt, if I was to actually take this bolt or try to take this bolt, you can see that it does not actually wanna come out. And I've tried uh, WD-40, I've tried different things. Okay, well, it does. Uh, it is coming out right now, but let's say it didn't. <laughs> what I would do is actually just take an angle grinder now. I love this thing. This is another great piece of equipment in my arsenal. And I'm actually just going to cut. One sec, get this out. So I'm just gonna cut this nut out, okay? So I'm gonna just cut across both ways. Um, and as I said, one of them I just had, a bigger one, it was a very stubborn piece. I hacked at it and whacked at it, but I am persistent and stubborn and I prevailed. So here we go, I'm just gonna do that instead, put on some safety glass again. Just gonna cut across it. Gotta be careful, it might get a little warm, but just in case you can see that it's wobbling, that nut comes off, the screw comes off. Don't wanna to touch it though because it is gonna be hot. <laughs> but I'm just gonna pick it up with my magnet, there you go. So there's part of the nut right there. Just gonna peel up. There's gonna be a, just a steel washer there again, just like the other one. Okay, but there again is my washer. Just gonna pop that up, another piece of aluminum. Where is that piece? I don't wanna touch it because it is going to be warm, so you definitely wanna make sure you're using gloves or something, but there it is. So this is gonna be another piece of tin shred. And now, this one, I do have a couple bolts. And you do wanna make sure you check the inner washers. Sometimes the inner washers will be aluminum. So for example, this one, if I put a magnet to it, these ones are, but I have seen aluminum ones, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is just, again, hit it from the top. Okay, so there is my armature. There is some nice copper there. And for this one, uh, there are a couple little bolts, but all I'm actually gonna do, because I wanna get to that inner part, and the difference with this one, obviously, is this is a larger piece of plastic, which is okay because if I keep this steel on there, I'm gonna still get the tin shred price. I have some really nice yellow brass prongs there. I am gonna make sure I put it, uh, uh, break this little box open. There is gonna be connectors in here as well. But I do wanna make sure I scratch this. Here is some free lint. But you can see this one, there is copper, which is great. And all I'm actually gonna do for this one is I'm gonna just break it um, right here on the arms just to get it out to show you. Okay, so there it is. 
Just gonna break it open, get these two armatures out after. There's some more brass inside of that, look at that. But these, really great piece of copper. And I'm actually just gonna show you this one for the sake of this video. All I'm gonna do to open this up is I'm just gonna cut across there and there. And then I'm just gonna turn it over and pop the rest of it out. So put it back in my vise, and I am gonna weigh it for you to show you how much copper I have here. Okay, but here we go. Now the sparks did not come obviously from the copper. They came that little, um, Tape I had there does have a little piece of metal on it. But what I'm also gonna do, just to make sure that it is easier to come out, is I'm gonna turn these prongs just a little bit up. Okay, so they're easier to slide out. Make sure that they are all cut. That would definitely be a problem. If I was to cut it and a couple of the prongs were still fastened, but now I'm just gonna turn it over and again, use leverage to pry this out of here. My uh, vice is just kind of temperamental today, so I gotta work at this. All right, so just gonna take it now, put it underneath. Take this one, take that piece out. Okay, and sometimes if you work at it, just start rocking it back and forth. Okay, it is coming up, but gotta work at it. Sometimes they are greased, which is nice too, but sometimes depending on the thickness of the wire as well, so just gonna pull this up now with a pair of pliers. There you go. So there's one. This is a good sign too because it means it's heavier. <laughs> but here you go. There's some really nice copper. The rest of this is gonna go into my tin shred. I wanna get all these pieces of copper. So really nice plate here. Again, it is in there really nicely, um, but some beautiful copper right here. And I'm just gonna weigh this for you. So here's my scale. Turn it on. So this again, as I said, would be number two copper. And that's because there is a coating on it. Um, it does have some tape, but number two, it's going for four dollars and three cents a pound. I have just right there alone 7.6 ounces. Um, if I was to factor in, obviously, I have 10 here. I even if I have half of them that are copper, it's going to give me you know four or five pounds worth. The armature here, I still have to weigh in the copper here, so I'm going to get maybe a, an ounce there. Not much, but definitely better than nothing. Uh, very easy to take apart. Still gonna get the tin shred from this, uh, the brass from these prongs. Okay, here alone, just the case, there's over a pound there still of tin shred. And the aluminum, just to show you from two of them, there is 2.1 ounces. So better than nothing for sure. Um, again, hopefully that answered that question. You know, for some people that drive right by the uh, motors, I don't agree with that at all. You're still gonna get some value from it, um, definitely. You know, even if you brought it in whole, you're gonna get, you know, a pound's worth of uh, copper motor. But, uh, you know, given the frequency and how common I find vacuum cleaners, an easy scrapple, scrapper's delight. So hopefully that answered that question for uh, the people that asked. Please continue asking. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.